China challenges the U.S. to an air duel, new weapons to invade Taiwan, and China's new patriotic scientists. That and more on this week's China News Headlines. Welcome to China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. A grim warning from a top official in the Chinese military. People's Liberation Army Deputy Air Force Commander Wang Wei is challenging the U.S. Air Force, saying, I can only say, if they are not scared, let us meet in the sky. I say, if you really want to challenge the U.S. Air Force, you should have said, let us meet in the sea. The PLA's commander's comments are a response to something U.S. Air Force Secretary Frank Kendall said last month. He wants to scare China. Scare China? That's easy to do. Just show them this photo. Now, the PLA commander didn't actually mention Kendall by name. He just referred to him as a counterpart of mine who is from a major country. He also said the Chinese Navy is capable and confident to ensure national security and defend integrity, as well as make a contribution to world peace. And by defend integrity, he meant China will take over Taiwan, since China considers Taiwan a part of its territory, even though it's an independent country. And by contribute to world peace, he meant starting a war. And China is getting the gear it needs to start that war. Later this year, China plans to roll out a fighter jet capable of launching from their aircraft carriers. What? China's aircraft carriers will soon be able to carry aircraft? China has two carriers built, and the third one on the way. The first two have what are called ski jump ramps. But the third will have a catapult launch system, like U.S. aircraft carriers. It makes it possible for heavier aircraft to take off. Of course, since China's new catapult aircraft carrier will be made in China, the quality might be somewhat lacking. And in addition to building a new jet, China is apparently trying to buy Russian assault helicopters which would be very useful if China decided to invade, oh, I don't know, an island nation named Taiwan? According to experts, China's current assault helicopter isn't capable of the amphibious and island landing role the Russian assault helicopters are, which means in the long run, Chinese assault helicopters would be capable of that too, because the PLA has historically worked to reverse engineer the superior Russian military technologies it has purchased. But there's one weakness the Chinese military is rapidly trying to solve. I'll tell you what it is after the break. Welcome back. The Chinese military has a major weakness. It's reliance on people. You see, people have a conscience. Sometimes they don't want to carry out crimes against humanity. Enter the new Chinese drone, Loyal Wingman. It won't have any problems opening fire on heavily populated civilian cities like Taipei. Now, the interesting thing about this Chinese drone is that it looks almost identical to a U.S. drone. I'm sure that's a total coincidence and not because it's stolen tech. The U.S., Britain, Australia, India, and Russia have similar drones, which are cheaper and more expendable than crude fighters. But the Chinese Communist Party has even cheaper, more expendable drones than this. The average Chinese soldier. But to the Chinese regime, warfare doesn't always mean boots on the ground, troop on troop fighting. A French research institute affiliated with the French military has released this new report. It warns about the massive scale of Chinese influence around the world. They detail key strategies the Chinese Communist Party is using to undermine the West as part of its three warfares. That's psychological warfare, public opinion warfare, and legal warfare. Psychological warfare seeks to demoralize the enemy. Public opinion warfare seeks to shape the hearts and minds of the masses. Legal warfare seeks to use systems of law to deter enemy attacks. The report also talks about a special branch of the Communist Party itself, the United Front. According to the report, it has two main functions infiltration and coercion. 
Infiltration aims to slowly penetrate opposing societies in order to hinder any inclination to act against the interests of the party. Coercion corresponds to the gradual expansion of punitive or coercive diplomacy to become a policy of systematic sanction against any state, organization, enterprise, or individual threatening the interests of the party. I'm glad this new report has been submitted to the French military. They're not ones to surrender without a fight. Have you ever wished science could be a little more patriotic? That's certainly what Chinese presentator Xi Jinping wishes for. He says he wants to nurture patriotic scientists. Specifically, he wants scientists and intellectuals with the correct political inclination. And don't worry, he left that so intentionally vague that it's incredibly threatening. Maybe now Chinese scientists can answer the big questions like, what causes all that fog in Beijing? Is it steam released by the struggle of the proletariat against Western capitalist running dogs? Why does Chinese milk powder taste so delicious? Is it because the melamine plastic they put in it helps mold children into ideal socialists? And of course, why does communism work everywhere it's been tried? The answer to that should be obvious. Anywhere it's historically hasn't worked, they burned all the books. And after the break, Good news if you want to visit China. You might be okay. Welcome back. Now I'm sure after watching China Uncensored, you're dying to visit China. Well, good news if you're Canadian. You probably won't be kidnapped by Chinese police. Probably. Yesterday I told you the story of two Canadians who were released after being kidnapped by Chinese police. It was political retaliation for Canada's arrest of a Chinese businesswoman. Well, this week, a CBC reporter asked the Chinese ambassador to Canada why any Canadian would travel to China if they risk being arbitrarily detained. The ambassador responded, they should not be afraid of anything like that. But of course, if a very, very small number of people engage in those criminal activities, it's quite reasonable and justified for us to take relevant measures. But I think for the vast majority of people, they should not be worried. The vast majority won't be kidnapped. I don't think you can ask for better odds. Especially when you have the chance to start your Chinese vacation off relaxing in a new 5,000 room quarantine center China has built for foreigners. This is obviously not part of the kidnapping process. In fact, the quarantine center took less than three months to be built from scratch. And the vast majority of China's hastily built quarantine centers do not collapse and kill people. In this new quarantine hotel for foreigners, each room is fitted with a video chat camera and an artificial intelligence powered thermometer, with three meals a day delivered by robots. I hope it's not the loyal wingman. Good news though, China will not be needing those quarantine hotels for the 2022 Winter Olympics. That's because they're banning foreign spectators. This is, of course, completely due to the coronavirus. It has absolutely nothing to do with being a convenient way to stop potential Olympic boycotts. And an update on a story we ran a few weeks ago about top U.S. General Mark Milley's secret call to China. Milley has confirmed he made the call, except it wasn't secret. Milley said Trump's defense secretary, Mark Esper, actually asked him to. Milley's comments are consistent with reports we told you about previously, about how the Department of Defense was worried that the Chinese regime was getting bad intelligence and thought the U.S. was about to attack. So they told the Chinese regime the U.S. was not going to attack. Milley also confirmed he did tell his Chinese counterpart that he would call if the U.S. attacked. Sort of. When pressed on whether he told Li he would notify him should the U.S. choose to plan an attack on China, Milley replied, I said, General Li, there's not going to be a war, there's not going to be an attack between great powers, and if there was, the tensions would build up. There'd be calls going back and forth from all kinds of senior officials. I said, hell, General Li, I'll probably give you a call, but we're not going to attack you, trust me, we're not going to attack you. Milley also said he was certain Trump was not going to attack China. That is substantially different from how that call was portrayed in the book Peril by Bob Woodward and Robert Costa. 
They framed the story as Milley going behind Trump's back to call China and say he would warn them if the U.S. was planning to attack because he was so worried Trump would attack. So it seems like that's not true. Bob Woodward is, of course, the famous Washington Post reporter who exposed the Watergate scandal that brought down President Nixon. Woodward is controversial. There have been allegations that in past books, he hid important contexts or even made up facts to fit a narrative. So I hope this will make you all think twice about how you judge whom I consider the greatest U.S. president of all time, Richard Nixon. And now it's time for me to answer a question from a member of the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army, a viewer who supports our channel on the crowdfunding websites Patreon and Locals. Bitter Comments asks on Patreon, it sounds like China has a stronghold on the world's rare earth elements. Is this a major problem for the rest of the world? And if so, what can be done about it? Yes, China has a firm grip on rare earth metals. It controls around 80% of global rare earth elements processing. And we'll talk about this in an upcoming episode of America Uncovered, about the dangers of Chinese-made solar panels. China often gets these rare earth metals from countries like the Democratic Republic of Congo, which, you know, likes to use a dash of child labor in their minds. But China also has huge deposits of its own rare earth metals. These are critical in a lot of the modern technology we use, like smartphones, electric cars, Tamagotchis. But there is some good news. In 2018, Japan found a huge deposit of rare earth metals, which they immediately blew making a life-size Gundam. But there are other ways the U.S. can put pressure on China. By leveraging rare earth metals the U.S. has that China needs. Or the U.S. could limit the exports of semiconductors, which China also needs. And President Biden's new infrastructure plan is partially about increasing U.S. processing of rare earth metals. So you can see bitter comments, there's reason to be hopeful. And even if China does control rare earth metals, the U.S. still has China beat on heavy metals. Thanks for your question and your support, bitter comments. And a big thank you to everyone who's joining us in the fight to expose the Chinese Communist Party of the world. Making the show is hard, but with YouTube's censorship and demonetization, and the fact that most advertisers aren't brave enough to work with us. So we rely on your support. You can join over at patreon.com slash China Uncensored, or chinauncensored.locals.com. You get different perks with each, so check them out. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.